So Ross Perot was a billionaire, and he was a, a fascinating presidential candidate, and he just passed away at the age of 89. Um, he ran an independent presidential campaign in 1992. Uh, that's the year that Bill Clinton won. And then he ran a third-party campaign in 1996, and he established the Reform Party. And for like two election cycles, maybe three election cycles, the Reform Party was getting like a decent amount of press, um, but then, you know, kind of withered away into nothingness after a while. Um, but both of his campaigns were among the strongest presidential showings by a third party or independent candidate in U.S. history. So that's something. That's an interesting fact there. I actually have vague memories of, um, you know, Ross Perot running for president. I was, I was born in 88, so I definitely don't remember from 92. His first run, I remember more from the second run, 96. is I have some, like, vague memories of it. Um, now, his ideology is fascinating because it's kind of all over the place. So he, he's most known for strongly opposing the Gulf War and NAFTA. Those were were like his big issues, and he also supported a balanced budget and enacting an electronic direct democracy. I did not know about that last one, the electronic direct democracy thing, but apparently he was a big proponent of that. Now, in 1992, he won 18.9% of the popular vote. 18.9%. That is a lot for an independent candidate. In fact, that might be... There might never, ever again be an independent candidate who gets that much. Um, but here's the kicker. You ready for this? He didn't win any electoral votes. So he got 18.9% of the popular vote, but zero electoral votes. So obviously he didn't come anywhere near winning the presidency. And this is actually one of the reasons why I've told people that repeatedly that the way to really change politics is that you have to take over one of the two major parties because the way our system is designed... That's really the only path to getting real power, is to take over one of the two parties. And especially for presidential runs, Ross Perot is the best example of that, because the dude almost got 20% of the vote and zero electoral votes. So obviously it ain't gonna work. So, um, but nonetheless, he's a fascinating character. He was in on the debates, I think in 1992, I'm not sure if he was in 96, but in 92 he was on the debate stage with George H.W. Bush and Bill Clinton. And it was after his performance in those debates that the Democratic Party and the Republican Party came together and said, we have to keep independents out of these debates because they could be spoilers in either direction. So the Democrats and the Republicans said, let's protect our own asses here. And they changed the debate rules. And then now you guys know it's mostly independents are like not up there um, or third party candidates are not up there. So um he was really the reason behind that because he did well and got a lot of votes and then the Democrats and Republicans said, all right, we got to stop this. So here's Ross Perot on the issue of trade, one of his main issues, talking about that in a 1992 debate. Uh, what will you do as president to open foreign markets to fair competition from American business and to stop unfair competition here at home from foreign countries so that we can bring jobs back to the United States? That's right at the top of my agenda. We've shipped millions of jobs overseas, and uh, we have a strange situation because we have a process in Washington where after you've served for a while, you cash in, become a foreign lobbyist, make $30,000 a month, then take a leave, work on presidential campaigns, make sure you've got good contacts, and then go back out. Now, if you just want to get down to brass tacks, first thing you ought to do is get all these folks who've got these one-way trade agreements that we've negotiated over the years, and say, fellas, we'll take the same deal we gave you. And they'll gridlock right at that point. Because, for example, we've got international competitors who simply could not unload their cars off the ships if they had to comply. You see, if it was a two-way street, just couldn't do it. We have got to stop sending jobs overseas. To those of you in the audience who are business people, pretty simple. If you're paying $12, $13, $14 an hour for factory workers, and you can move your factory south of the border, pay a dollar an hour for labor, hire a young 25... That's assume you've been in business for a long time, you've got a mature workforce. Pay a dollar an hour for your labor, have no health care, that's the most expensive single element, making a car, have no environmental controls, no pollution controls, and no retirement, 
and you don't care about anything but making money, there will be a giant sucking sound going south. So we, if, if the people send me to Washington, the first thing I'll do is study that 2,000-page agreement and make sure it's a two-way street. I, one last point here. I've called, I decided I was dumb and didn't understand it, so I called the who's who of the folks who have been around it. And I said, why won't everybody go south? They said, we'll be disruptive. I said, for how long? I finally got them up for 12 to 15 years. And I said, well, how does it stop being disruptive? And that is when their jobs come up from a dollar an hour to six dollars an hour and ours go down to six dollars an hour, then it's leveled again. But in the meantime, you've wrecked the country with these kinds of deals. He was right. He was spot on. He was before his time. And that's why he was able to get 18.9 percent of the vote in a system that is just completely and utterly biased in favor of the two parties. We have a two-party system, but he was a disruptor. And so he was definitely noteworthy, and he was definitely an outsider. Even though he was a billionaire, he was definitely an outsider in many ways. Um, and he's a fascinating dude. I mean, later on in his life, it was weird because in 2008, he supported John McCain. In 2012, he supported Mitt Romney. Very strange because Mitt Romney and John McCain were both way more in favor of free trade than Obama was. Obama, at least in his rhetoric, was much more protectionist than John McCain and, um, and Mitt Romney, but Ross Perot supported the two Republicans. Wonder why. Um, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm actually not posing an answer to that question. I'm like, uh, actually a little bit genuinely curious, but I have a fear that it might be something. Um, but anyway, Ross Perot was an interesting uh, character and like I said, just passed away at the age of 89, and I wanted to give everybody a little bit of information on his life and his impact on politics.